Hey, what's going on guys? I'm coming to you today with a Rebel Fleet build for Star Wars Armada and today I am taking another look at my hammerhead firing line because I wanted to take a look at the a different way to run a Corvette, um, a hammerhead scout Corvette. And the idea of this is I've been, some of you, if you follow me on, um, on here and you've seen some of my other videos, I've complained a little bit lately about wishing that the Rebels had a better carrier similar to the Quasar. Uh, and the reason for this is because there's certain, certain ships uh, or certain things that you can do with the Quasar that I didn't really have a good way of doing another way. And specifically, it's like one of my favorite cards right now for squadrons is flight controllers. You see a lot of the best carriers for the Rebels, like if you're running a Nebulon with Yvaris, you can't give it flight controllers, so while they can attack twice, they don't get the benefit of that. Um, and so I was like, well, I can run Assault Frigates, but they're kind of expensive, uh, you know, and granted you have squadron value of three, but I wanted a squadron value of four and also be able to put that on there. Now, granted, yes, yes, you can put, you know, you can bump up the squadron value here by putting the expanded hangar bay. And so in theory, like, this, this is what you could do. You could put flight controllers. Let me just take a look at an Assault Frigate Mark II B. Your squadron value is three. You have to go with the Mark II B for the three squadron value. Then you can get flight controllers on there. And then you can either run Leia or you can put Ramus Antilles on there, you know, 90 points that way. Or if you have Leia elsewhere, you're looking at 83 points just for that. Yes, there are also good titles. You can put Paragon, but you'd have to be close there. I mean, not Paragon, Gallon Haven uh, for eight points there if you wanted that. Um, but just the basic, you know, to be able to hit, um, you know, you can hit five squadrons this way. However, the Quasar can potentially hit six and it's cheaper, right? Uh, and so 83 points is a lot, but I'm like, well, that's that's still not bad. It's, it's honestly, it's not bad. It's actually a fairly tanky ship. Um, it's tankier than the Quasar, so even though it may be more, maybe a little bit more expensive, you know, you don't need perfect symmetry between both factions. I understand that. Um, I was just kind of, you know, it's just a wish list, wishful thinking. I wasn't really complaining. Like, the Rebels aren't hurting for squadron activation ships. But I would kind of hoping, you know, ideally, I'd like a cheaper version to be able to, you know, do flight controllers and hit a lot of ships. So I was thinking to myself uh, that maybe the Hammerhead is a way to go. And we have two different versions. So, like, for example, for much cheaper, I could potentially do the same thing because, hold on a second, you know, we, we think of boarding parties for these guys, but I could put enhanced hangar bay, or expanded hangar bay rather, and then, uh, you know, flight controllers on this guy. Now it's only 47 points. Now, if Leia is my commander, if I'm going with Leia already, and for a lot of, you know, there are a lot of squadron builds that would like Leia because it's, you know, free squadron token every turn, uh, effectively, or, and for those that aren't going squad, like if you need to split up, if you want some of your ships doing squadrons and then maybe one or two doing concentrate fire, um, it's great. It's definitely great for that. Uh, so, like, here's a 47-point solution. That can get you three squadrons a turn with flight controllers. Now, that's not bad, especially if you double it. You're looking at less than 90 points. You got six squadrons a turn. So that's, you know, that's definitely something to think about. So I was like, how can I best use this? Because the problem with flight controllers, as good of an upgrade as it is, a lot of people only have one because this comes with the victory. And how many victories are you going to buy? I mean, you already get one in the core set. So do you really want to buy beyond your one victory expansion? I mean, unless you're a power gamer like me, you know, a lot of people will typically only get one victory expansion. And that's not even one of the first ships they buy because you've already got one from the core set. Um... So I, I did get a second victory uh, expansion, so I have two copies of Flight Controller. So I could run it on two different ships, so I thought about this. Well, if I'm going to do that, um, I want these ships to stay alive. So I'm not going to go with the Black Die version. I'm going to go with the Scout Corvette version. And I think it's going to be you know, a modification of my, uh, my regular build. So if I, if I go a little bit more expensive, I can go Expanded Hangar Bay and Flight Controllers. Well, now, all of a sudden, I've got... Uh, I've got 52 points and that's still it's a little more expensive but it's not bad because i've got a decent frontal shot i can't throw the blue die at long range but that's okay because here's the thing too is since i'm using weapons team for flight controllers i'm not putting gunnery team on here and so i'm probably only going to get one shot right and so another cool thing about the hammerhead and i've been doing a lot of hammerhead videos lately um but the other cool thing about the hammerhead is if you're only going to get one shot why not put on slaved turrets now I've got a pretty decent shot. That's a that's a fairly good shot, especially if you combine that with, hey, let's run Task Force Organa 
on all of these guys. <clears throat> you know, so so that's kind of cool. It's still pretty cheap for a dual threat. You can activate a bunch of squadrons, uh, and well, a decent. I mean, three is not bad. Three is definitely not bad. Um, this is also assuming Leia, because you know Leia's the foregone conclusion. Or you could put Ramus Antilles if you're going with somebody else. You could just do a single one. If you just needed, like, you might not need flight controllers on all of your squadrons. If you're going like B-wing bombers uh, and stuff like that, and then you have some A-wings, maybe you want the flight controllers for the A-wings. For me, I like it with the Z95s personally. But um, you know, you don't, you might not need flight controllers on everybody if some of your ships or some of your squadrons are hitting ships. So. This is just the first part of the video. Now I'm gonna show you the builds. I've already done it, um, so here we go. All right, so this is the whole build. Let me zoom out a little bit. And so we're starting off with a hammerhead um, and with slave turrets, Task Force Organa, Adar Talon on this one. Adar Talon, so we can go early, activate a bunch of squadrons and potentially go again if we need to. All right, so then another one, same thing, but this one is not running uh, Task Force Argana, the second one, and that's basically because, um, actually I want to swap that, I'm going to put Task Force Argana on this one, I think I screwed that up, and the idea is, this guy will go first, um, you don't want your first shooter to be, um, no, wait a, hold on a second, no, I'm doing it the other way around, yes, I want it here, okay, scratch that, so yes, he's going to go first, then he's got Task Force Argana ready for everybody else, to go ahead and shoot because I have I have four hammerheads in this build, um, but then this guy's also just there for squadrons and he's gonna have to suffer. He doesn't get the re rolls on his dice, but I needed I was at 400 points. All right, so now I've got two more hammerhead scout corvettes, and now these guys are not doing squadrons. These guys are shooting, and they're exactly the same. They're both running Task Force Organa. The first one that shoots uh, has got spinal armament and gunnery team, so he gets re rolls and he can make this first guy. Um, you know, tap his Organa card, get some re-rolls, and uh, then we've got the, the next one that can then tap this guy, so you kind of get the domino effect of Task Force Organa, giving everybody lots of re-rolls, plus one re-roll from Leia, so you're going to roll at least three dice at long range, you get your re-rolls on, you know, if you only need one re-roll, you use, you know, you add your die with Leia, and get your re-roll that way, if you need more than that, then you can also do Task Force Organa, but you can also get, you know, two attacks per turn, so these guys are going to be pretty pretty good artillery long range firing. Um, I have Leia herself running around on a CR-90B. Now I would love to have put some more stuff on there, but she's kind of going to be just flying away. This is like the new version of a lifeboat for me, a very very maneuverable ship, um, and it's not necessarily super 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 optimal. Like I could potentially have just dropped a spinal armament off of one of these guys and upgraded this one a little bit more. That's definitely a possibility. Um, but let's look at the squadrons. So here is the idea though. I've got eight squadrons, which is a pretty good number. I'm running three VCXs and five Z95s. Now because I've got three VCXs, I'm okay with going up, coming in at 400 points because if I'm second player, no problem. I will pick objectives that are gonna take advantage of strategic so uh, you know I've got uh, you know I've got three instances of strategic also with three anybody who's doing squadrons can hit all you know hit, can hit everything so I don't even have to worry. I can keep these guys in the back and they can still shoot uh, from the back I've got a lot of long-range firing dice I, I think this would be a really fun one uh, so slight modification from one of my old firing line builds uh, the only weakness I really ha I see in this build right now is uh, or the biggest weakness I should say is is Leia um, you know being pretty killable with the CR-90B but if I want to just I mean she, but I think she's gonna make a good objective ship I think she's going to make this into a very fast ship that if I wanted to do um, you know capture the VIP or or whatever um, she's just a, a great candidate for that uh, so there you go and if you end up somehow with first player then all the more survivable she will be so let's take a look at objectives I haven't picked my objectives yet because that's kind of half the fun so now one of the things is I definitely don't want advanced gunnery here even though I do have some good ships that would love to be able to shoot twice they've already got gunnery teams the other ones that don't have slaved turrets so they'd only be able to shoot once regardless opening salvo could be great here it definitely could be great here um, so opening salvo is something I'll keep in mind it is only five I usually like to have six 
for opening salvo, but that's uh, definitely a possibility. Most of the red ones don't really have too many um, advantages for strategic, so um, I'm not using any flotillas, so I'm not going to go with most wanted, even though that could potentially work as well. Uh, we do have a lot of squadrons, but we don't have bomber, so I don't think I want to go with pre precision strike. Um, I will go ahead and go with opening salvo here. Uh, we have we have some some beautiful beautiful stuff and a lot of a lot of ships rolling dice with the rerolls from Task Force Organa. I think opening salvo is a great option here, uh, or at least a solid option. Uh, usually enough to scare other people into not picking it. So our blue and yellow is probably what somebody else is going to choose. Um, let's look at yellows first. Capture the VIP is definitely a possibility. Leia could go on there and she could take that. Um, Let's see, co uh, catch a contested outpost, and I'm not not really feeling that one as much. I, we have to have command values, and I don't like that one. Um, fighter ambush could definitely work here because we have um, relay, and we've got lots lots of relay. So, um, and so so first off, we have a special rule after a squadron performs an attack against the ship, but this one could also hurt us, right? Um, but it does get me all of my ships out there pretty far, so I'm liking that. This one works really, really good with speed two squadrons, as well. But uh, but yeah, I'm, I, I'm I'm definitely thinking fighter ambush is a possibility because of the relay, and we can hit everybody from wherever we want. And I'm liking that one quite a bit. Um, I must be, actually, as I'm thinking about it too, I could probably drop eight R talents as I don't have any aces. Or I could just simply add Luke Skywalker and drop some other stuff. So there's definitely flexibility with this list. But uh, the side side thought. Um, now firing lanes is actually a pretty, also another another contender because you're going to be putting three tokens down and trying to uh, trying to get you know get the points for those. And if you can move the move them back with your VCXs um, and keep them away from the enemy, you can rack up more points. The problem is if you move them behind you. Um, ah, no, not with that one. Sorry. If you move them behind you, you you don't really have any dice in your firing arcs. So, you know, you, this kind of works a little better with better side arc ships. So, out of the yellow so far, I'm thinking fighter ambush might be good. Uh, might be the best one. Fleet ambush. That one's always interesting, but I don't. I'm not feeling it for this one. Um, I, I do like planetary ion cannon a lot, but I don't think that really takes advantage of the strength for this one. Jamming barrier would be a lot of fun here. It would help keep my firing line alive. Um, I think jamming barrier could be really, really cool. Especially if uh, I, I shoot and then I activate my squadrons and then move the barrier for defense. So I could I could activate squadrons, or I'd be activating squadrons first and then activating squadrons again. So I could basically activate squadrons, move the barrier, then, you know, then shoot and then on the next activation, I, oh, jamming barrier would be fun with this one. Because nobody ever wants to play with Jamming Barrier. I have never seen this one actually get picked in a serious game. So I think this would be brilliant. I think it would be so much fun to do Jamming Barrier here. Um, yes. Yeah, so we, so we get to put dust, dust Fields too are actually really nice against like these potentially really weak ships. So somebody's kind of trying to gonna try and come in on your side or whatever. Oh, I like that one. That's going to be fun. All right, and now let's look at our... Our blue objectives, minefields, is definitely definitely a possibility here. I do have the strategic to deal with anybody who tries to uh, push them back towards me, uh, so that's a good one. Intel sweep. Um, let's see the five objective tokens in the setup area, starting with the second player. Each token must be placed. Trish going over this one again. Um, when a player receives a command dial, if that player may choose one objective token and just one. So Intel Sweep could work here. We could pretty much take advantage of this and make sure that we get 75 points for Intel Sweep. That's pretty solid. Uh, I, I I don't think uh, yeah I don't think there's too many ways that this one could really be used against us with three strategic. So Intel Sweep is definitely and I, I don't choose this one very often. Um, and 75 points is a lot of points. Honestly, that's basically that's like a whole that's more than one of my ships. Um, that's almost two of my ships. So, well, minus upgrades, but yeah. So that's that's not half bad. So I think that's what we'll go with. Um, I think that's what we'll go with for this one. Yeah, and we're going to call this one... What are we going to call this one? We'll call this one... Um, hammerhead Leia. No, squadrons, right? So flight controller hammerheads. All right. So we'll call it flight controller hammerheads. Flight... Oh, our caps is on. Oh my gosh, flight 
controller. I can't type today. There we go. And I will pull it up. So there it is, guys. That is the list. And uh, let me know what you think. Um, I, I, right now, honestly, I think Adar Talon is probably not the best option here. Um, so this is just like kind of a template. You can fiddle around with this, and if you want the initiative bed, you could probably just drop Adar Talon completely um, and even fit another Z95 in his place. That's, <laughs> honestly, that's probably a... Yeah, yeah I actually... That's that's probably what what the better option is is to just drop him and put a whole another Z95 instead of him. Uh, this way you're getting an extra whole whole extra activation. So that's probably the better option. But uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I had planned to put aces when I started doing this, and it just didn't didn't line up. So it's kind of funny from start to end the little mistakes we make. But I do it here for your pleasure. So if you haven't already, uh, give this uh, uh, channel a subscribe so you can get more updates as we put them out. And if you haven't, um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.